every single passing minute in the gymnasium felt like torture. Not that Goshiki complained about hard practices. He had to work hard if he wanted to stay on the starting roster. That wasn't the thing making him feel like he was going to faint soon. He had been part of Azuma Pharmacy team for three years already, and he had never seen more great players joining like this year. Some of them were even already being put into starting six in place of the more experienced guys from time to time. Which was what sent creeps up Goshiki's spine. The terrible, crawling feeling of being replaced, of messing up the only thing that mattered to him, was getting insufferable. He often found himself watching the new players from the side, his hands glanced convulsively to the point of pain and heart beating like crazy. How could he compete against someone with so much raw talent just waiting to be brought up by practice in a pro team? The nagging, annoying voice never forget to remind him that. Especially around their youngest newbie. The guy reminded him of Ushijima. Tall and strong with powerful spikes and serves that even their high caliber libero had trouble receiving. His stamina never seemed to run out, and his prompt smile made him quickly popular among the other players. Goshiki knew he should be happy the team got such talented and hardworking player, but the longer he watched the coaches praise him, the tighter his chest got. He had been there before always overshadowed by his senpais. The feelings of helplessness and despair he felt back then, it was all coming back now, except ten times worse. This was all he had. If he failed now, his career could end since there was always a chance no other team would want him. All his hard work would be for nothing. He flinched when the ball hit the floor with a deafening boom. Maybe... maybe I should let him had this one. Better back off than fail, right? He squeezed the ball in his hands. Just a few days ago, he heard the coaches talking about making the newbie a starter in the next match. He didn't know instead of who, but the dread pulled in his stomach regardless. They played at the same position. He could be switched at any time. And the guy was so much better. He shook his head. He couldn't fail this. He couldn't. Gashiki, you're up next. Gashiki flinched and quickly bowed his head in apology before he threw the ball to their setter and ran for the spike. He hit it well, but not nearly well enough. Maybe I really should back out while it's still time. Gashiki. He raised his eyes and his throat tightened when he spotted the coach waving him over. Yes, coach. You seem a bit distracted lately. Is something troubling you? Everything alright on the team and home? Gashiki bit the inside of his cheek. Home. Since he raised his voice at Kogana last week. The atmosphere between them was a bit strange, as if they walked around each other on their tiptoes. Perhaps that was another reason why he wasn't doing as well lately. It was another thing on his mind, after all, when he was supposed to only think about his game. Nothing is wrong, coach. All is fine. Are you sure? If there's problem on the team, we have to deal with it. I don't want you boys to be awkward around each other. It's really nothing. I have no problem with anyone on the team. I'll make sure to focus better, I promise. The coach measured him for a moment longer before nodding. Alright then. But please remember that communication is important. Especially on a team. Yes, coach. Thank you. He rushed back into the line for spike drills, the coach's words echoing in his head. Distracted. 
He had to admit he had been distracted lately with Kogane and all. His eyes strayed to the net where the newbie landed another great spike. Is he not getting distracted by anything? Is that why he's so good? Maybe it would be worth it to ask about it. Determined, he nodded to himself. He would get to the bottom of this. The coach seemed pleased when he asked him if he could stay a bit longer to practice on his own, but warned him not to overdo it, just like before. But that was okay. He wasn't going to overdo anything, just practice his serves a bit. He bid farewell to his teammates, waiting to catch the newbie alone to talk. Unfortunately, it seemed like the other guys had him in their clutches already the sight making Goshiki doubt his intentions. Did he have to go to such length? He still had his spot, no one said he was being replaced. And he could do his job even from the bench. There was much more risk of failing if he pushed too hard, right? Well, I won't lose anything by asking either. He made his way to the group and tapped on the newbie's shoulder. Sorry, um, can I speak with you for a bit? Oh, Goshiki-san. Sure, is everything alright? No. I just want to ask about something, if you don't mind. He waited until they were left alone, feeling the other's curious gaze on him the whole time. Come on, no risk in asking. I was wondering, how do you do it that you are improving so fast? I mean, you obviously work hard, but you seem to go forward faster than most of us. The guy furrowed his brow before his face lit up with a smile. Oh, thank you. I guess I just don't let anything distract me. My family lives abroad for now, and I don't have a partner, so I can put my full focus into practice. Goshiki paused. Partner would be a distraction for you? He had never thought about it like that. It was nice coming home to someone he liked and who liked him. Well, I mean, you have to put a lot of effort and thought into a relationship, right? Always taking care of what your partner feels and doing something they like. I don't have to worry about that so I can practice. And I don't have to worry about what my girlfriend is thinking all the time. Helps keep your head clean. Oh, I guess there is some truth in that. But Kanji isn't a distraction, right? He's a pro player too, he understands. The other shrugged, the smile back on his face. Worked for me so far. Anything else I can help you with? No, that's... that's all. Thank you. Thoughts swirled wildly in his head as he watched the other heading towards changing rooms. Was having a partner really such a distraction he got worse? But it only started recently. We've been together since high school. Though truth to be told, he was thinking a lot about Kogana lately. And about everything going on between them. Of course he was concerned about his boyfriend's thoughts, but was that enough to get him stuck? Pushing the thought away, he positioned himself for the surf practice, but just as he tossed the ball into the air, his phone vibrated loudly on the bench. The heck? He frowned and checked the phone, furrowing his brow even more upon seeing four new messages from Gogana. Eitsu, where are you? I thought you were supposed to be home at six. So I'm just checking. Call me when you have time. Goshiki sighed, a tiny prickle of annoyance jabbing in his chest. Was it so difficult to send all that in one message? I'm still at practice. I can't call right now. 
He put the phone down, but before he made a single step, another onslaught of incoming text made him groan in frustration. Oh, okay. When do you think you'll come? I'll put dinner aside for you, okay? Or I can wait for you if you want. No, don't wait for me. I'll come late. But why? Is your coach making you stay longer? You aren't practicing by yourself again, are you? Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Just don't wait for me. I don't know when I'll come. With that, he muted the chat and turned off all sounds on the phone, gritting his teeth. So annoying. He tossed the ball up and hit his probably worst surf in the entire week. Clicking his tongue, he grabbed another ball and repeated the process. Stupid giant! Can't he see I need to do this? This time, the ball didn't even make it over the net. Fail after fail after fail. He squeezed his eyes shut, trying to silence the annoying voice in his head. It just wasn't his day. That happened sometimes, right? He took a deep breath and prepared for another serve. If he just wasn't so damn... The ball ricocheted from his palm, landing far behind the line. He wasn't sure if he should yell or cry as despair clawed its way around his heart. He had to focus, otherwise all he worked so hard for would be useless. He couldn't let anything distract him. Come on, damn it! He continued the fruitless attempts for another half an hour, but from all the serves he made, only three belonged to a professional volleyball player. The rest just brought his spirits down more and more. He threw the last ball into the trolley and closed the door to the equipment room before making his way back to his things and into the changing room. There were several new messages and three missed calls from Kogane on his phone, the sight igniting the annoyance bubbling in his chest. Does he not know what I can't call right now means? He threw his things into the bag and rushed out of the gym, his fists clenched and mind clouded. He couldn't fail this. The evening traffic jams didn't help his mood in the slightest. He no less than stumbled into the flat, unsure if he was glad or dreading coming home. Sue? Is that you? Who else? He heard surprisingly quiet footsteps, and soon Kogana's large form appeared in the living room. He visibly hesitated for a moment before wrapping Goshiki in a hug. I thought something happened. Why didn't you answer my texts? I was worried. Goshiki bit his tongue. He was glad Kogane listened to him and lowered his volume when speaking next to his ear, but he was still able to talk a hole through his head. I told you I was practicing. You didn't have to spam me. Kogane pulled away a bit. On your own? Again? Yes, again. What's so difficult to understand about that? Nothing. I just... I was worried. No need. I'm fine. I'm just trying to focus on the team. It was true. He was fine. If he could focus properly, everything would be fine. Kogane watched him without movement for a second before he pulled away completely. I know that, but I don't like seeing you overworking yourself again. This again? I'm not overworking myself. You are. Have you looked into a mirror recently? I can see how exhausted you are. Do you know how difficult it is for me to... A sudden spark of anger flared in Goshiki's chest. Difficult for you? 
This isn't about you, for fuck's sake. You're gonna recoil. That's not what I meant. I... I can do things on my own. Can't you get off my back for once? I'm just trying to help too. It's... You would help if you stopped distracting me all the time. He paused briefly upon seeing Kogan's confused expression. But his anger prevented him from caring much. I'm sorry. That's not what I wanted. But you do exactly that. For the last two weeks. All the time. It's so annoying. Why can't you be a bit useful and let me practice? I can't fail this. It's all I have. A heavy silence fell on the whole flat. Interrupted only by Koshiki's heavy breaths. He couldn't fail this. He couldn't fail. He couldn't... He froze when he noticed tears pooling in Kogana's eyes. The fury he felt disappeared immediately, leaving just an empty space that was quickly filling with horror when he fully realized what just left his mouth. Wait, no. I'm sorry, that, that came out wrong. You think I'm annoying? No, I... Then why? Why are you with me if... If I'm bothering you so much? That's not... You aren't bothering me. I didn't mean it like that, I swear. But you said it. And that the team is all you have. Do we mean so little to you? Gashiki's heart shattered upon seeing the broken look in Kogana's eyes. He wanted to say so much, apologize, explain, but his voice refused to listen. His throat tightened when Kogana shook his head and looked away to wipe his eyes. I guess this was doomed to fail after all. Fail. The floor swayed under Koshiki's feet. Kanji. Kogana gave him a sad but stern look, effectively silencing his remaining words. He turned away to grab his phone and keys, and Koshiki's words spun. No, his world just turned his back to him. Kanji, where... You could have told me sooner you don't care. I won't distract you anymore. A strangled cry muffled by his hands clasped over his mouth escaped Koshiki's throat. His chest constricted, his lungs not getting enough air to function as if someone closed him into a straitjacket. His heart hammered in his ears, drowning out all other sounds. The short, ragged breaths he took not enough. He failed. He failed in everything again. Failed the one he loved. Failed to be a partner Kogana deserved. He failed. He didn't notice he was collapsing until his knees hit the floor. He curled into a ball, instinctively trying to make himself as small as possible to escape the shrinking space around him. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Noja rolled with his stomach, making him even more sick than before. He couldn't even do one thing right. What a complete failure he was. Sue, can you hear me? Brief, brief, please. I'm sorry. I know. Brief, okay. Slowly, in and out. What do you need? Please. It's all right, I promise. I'm with you. Just breathe with me, okay? He followed Kogana's example with shaky breaths, trying to match his rhythm. That's it, you're doing great. Don't stop, okay? Don't leave, please. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I won't, I promise. Can you count out loud for me? I'll start, okay? One, two, three, three. 
four, five, six. Awesome. Go on. Seven, eight, nine. He counted onwards, slowly feeling as if his lungs were opening to the air around. The invisible pressure pushing him down disappeared little by little with every number he said out loud. His hands were still trembling, his cheeks were wet and the pain from his forearm where he dug his nails into his flesh deep enough to draw blood caught up with him. But at least he could breathe now. He stared at his ravaged skin, the droplets of blood trickling down his arm and onto the carpet, coloring it bright red. Oh. Then Kogana became a solid presence next to him instead of being a disembodied voice. He froze, his words from before crashing into him like a truck. Kogana caught his hand before he could do more damage to his arm. Don't stop breathing. It's all right. You're safe. I'm sorry. I know. Do you need anything? He shook his head. He just needed his boyfriend by his side. The one he loved and who he failed and hurt so badly. His vision haste again. Not even his hands enough to stop the sobs coming out of his mouth. He didn't deserve to cry. Not when. A large, warm hand gently rubbed his back, grounding him back into their living room. Shh. It's alright. It will be fine. You'll see. It took what felt like an eternity before Goshiki was able to think properly again. He was still trembling but a tangle of thoughts and emotions in his mind was slowly settling down. However, he still didn't find the courage to look at Kogana, not even when he carefully rubbed his forearm with a clean gauze. He couldn't look up, shame and fear paralyzing his whole body. What he said was unforgivable. He heard his boyfriend and couldn't do anything to take it back except maybe plead for forgiveness and pray their relationship could be salvaged. Not that he would blame Kogana if he just got up and left without looking back. He didn't deserve better for blaming his boyfriend from his own failures. I'm sorry. A deep sigh sounded next to him. I believe you, but that doesn't really change anything. Kashiki unsuccessfully tried to blink away the mist from his eyes. He didn't deserve to cry, not when everything was his fault. I know. Are you... Are you leaving? I'm not leaving you alone like this. Not yet. But I think we could use some time apart. To cool off a bit before we talk about this, you know? So I guess I'm taking the couch for now. No, stay in bed. I... I should be the mud moving away. Are you sure? You have harder practices, won't you be sore? A sad smile curled Goshiki's lips. Even after all he said, Kogana still worried about him. I really don't deserve you. It's fine. Alright then, how do you feel? Do you need anything? No. Nothing. I can't ask more from you. 